Hello and welcome to Justin DeWire Artistry. Today I'm going to demonstrate a mixture of literary and visual artwork. I'm going to create a mixed media artwork based on a piece of literature that I've carried around with me for more than 20 years. Today I'm making a guest appearance in collaboration with the Art Addicts Alliance. Each month the members of the group put out a video showcasing their fantastic art skills and talents based on a common theme. The theme for November is a choice of either Twisted Reality or a book synopsis. You'll learn more about my choice as the video goes on. You can find the members of the Art Addicts Alliance linked in my description box below. I encourage you to check them out and see how they have interpreted the theme for the month of November. Now without further ado, let's get cracking. In keeping with the time period of the poetry, I've chosen to use a feather to do my inking with in the inking portion of my mixed media artwork. Very briefly I'm going to show you a little bit about how to cut your own feather pen if you have never done it before. Simply take a very sharp knife, cut the edge of the pen off that will be the bottom part of the pen. It will look exactly just like a normal steel nib pen. Cut along through, try to slice the feather directly in half, take half of it off, clean and neat as you can, tidy up any loose edges and there you have it one dip pen ready to go. To make it a little bit more professional you can cut a slit in the very end that will help your pen to carry a little bit more ink. Take care to cut your pen nice and straight and keep the end nice and strong otherwise one side will be weaker than the other and will bend and flare out as you're drawing on the page. I bought this book back in the late 90s At that time I used to buy many books at second-hand bookshops and book sales anywhere that I could find them really what would have attracted me to this obviously apart from the fact that it's bright blue and it would have stood out is the fact that it looked very old And I like old things, I like old books, I love the smell of old books, old second-hand books. Over the years I've bought many books, thousands and thousands of books. Some of the books I've read again and again. Some of the books I've never even opened the cover and looked at a single page. And this book happens to be one of those. It's a book of poetry by Lord Byron. Now I don't know much about Lord Byron. I don't know much about his life. I don't know much about his poetry, or to be fair, about any kind of poetry. But I enjoy having the book. I bought the book because it was interesting to me to look at visually. I like the fact that it's, it's had a hard life, that it's quite worn out. This book has not been cared for at all. And yet, it's still quite readable. The information is still perfectly good. And we can still derive joy and pleasure from it. Now I don't know exactly how old the book is. There's a note on one of these end pages that says the first of the third 85. Now I don't think it's 1985, I could be wrong, but in my mind it's 1885, which means that the book is quite old. For 20 years I've transported this book around with me. I've never opened it, I've never read it. 
And as you can see, there are a great many pages in here. There are 719 pages. I've looked through the book for the purposes of this exercise and I've chosen a single poem. The poem that I've chosen is on page 148. The poem is titled To Time. Time on whose arbitrary wing the varying hours must flag or fly, whose tardy winter, fleeting spring, but drag or drive us on to die. Hail thou who on my birth bestowed these boons that all that know thee known, yet better I sustain thy load, for now I bear the weight alone. I would not one fond heart should share the bitter moments thou hast given, and pardon thee since thou couldst spare all that I love to peace or heaven. To them be joy or rest on me, thy future ill shall press in vain. I nothing owe but years to thee, a debt already paid in pain. Yet even that pain was some relief, it felt but still forgot thy power. The active agony of grief retards but never counts the hour. Enjoy upside to think thy flight would soon subside from swift to slow. Thy clouds could overcast the light, but could not add a night to woe. For then, however drear and dark, my soul was suited to thy sky. One star alone shot forth a spark to prove thee not eternity. That beam hath sunk, and now thou art a blank, a thing to count and curse. Through each dull, tedious, trifling part, which all regret and all rehearse. Unseen even thou canst not deform the limits of thy sloth or speed, when future wanderers bear the storm which we shall sleep too sound to heed. And I can smile to think how weak thine efforts shortly shall be shown, when all the vengeance thou can wreak must fall upon a nameless stone. In this artwork I've started in the top right hand corner with a ink portrait of Lord Byron. I've chosen to do this with ink because I wanted to try to replicate as closely as I could the same style of artwork as was contained within the book. There was no portrait of Lord Byron in the book so I've taken an image from the internet to use very loosely as a reference. In my particular piece of work I've taken his curly hair and extended it outwards to indicate the tendrils of thought and the intricate vision and unique personality of Byron's character. As I read through the book and look at the different poems, I get a sense of the way that Byron saw the world. He came from a wealthy family, but also had a lot of heartbreak in his life. He was a man with ideals, but he also was prone to all of the excesses of the wealthy class of his era. In the bottom section of this piece of work, I've painted in the picture of the book itself. The book, after all, is an important part of the journey. I would never have read these poems if I didn't buy the book. I wouldn't have bought the book if the way the book looked did not appeal to me and attract me all those years ago. So the book is important. In my design, I've used one-point perspective so that the book will recede into the distance and will draw you up the page toward the portrait of Lord Byron. The character of the book itself is just as important to me in this sense as the content that is contained within the book. And so the book has become a strong visual component of the final visual work. I've painted the book in watercolour to preserve the colouring of the book and the visual attraction, but I've muddied the colours around it to help add to the 
illusion of time, and I've added in the broken down details, the torn corner, the fading, the rips. These things appeal to me visually, but they're also in keeping with the nature of the poem itself that I've chosen. Now we come to the final portion of the work. I've chosen an antique ruin to paint in the middle section. Again I've used one point perspective to allow some ancient classical columns to recede away and to draw you over to the right hand side of the page. I've taken pages from the book itself to help me make the columns and I've added a little bit of pastel and a little bit of gouache and a little bit of watercolour. Byron was a member of a group called the Romantics and the Romantics tended to look back upon classical eras as being a high point in culture and they glorified those years. But the ancients had fallen into decay and all that was left was to descend into flights of fancy, to while away the time in flights of fancy, dancing with the fairies and losing ourselves, wondering and pondering what might have been. The final section of the drawing in the top left corner is a replica of what was below. This time a series of ascending pillars directly within the gaze of Lord Byron and demonstrating his desire and the hard work and passion that he put into trying to recreate and bring back those glory days of old. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And bye-bye.